This is Fisher Frying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250 DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Nest. In today's video, we're going to go through the design and fabrication of the rudder and elevator hinges for the Aria and I'm going to share with you some video from Algie Yates, who lives in the UK. Algie shares with us the Youngster Tail Kit that he just received and shows us how to properly create a scarf joint. I hope you enjoy. The rudder and elevator on the Aria, uh, the, the original design had um, uh, rudder hinges that just were sort of uh, hokey. Uh, they were just two angled pieces of pieces of angle with a bolt down through them. And um, um, my experience uh, with uh, having built a Vanzar V10 um, and I saw the hinges that they use, they're very robust and they're light and they use a heim joint or a, or a rod end bearing uh, to take the forces. And um, I just liked it a lot better. So um, we have created that uh, in, in uh, Onshape, which is a free program. Uh, on the internet, it's a cloud-based SolidWorks, basically. The guys that uh, developed it uh, left SolidWorks and, and created this. Super powerful, and uh, I use it all the time for design work and whatnot, so um, uh, it's a, get a free version of it, uh, but anything you develop in the free version, it stays in a public archive, and so unless you want to, uh, if you want to keep something to yourself, then you have to have the paid version. Um, so I designed the bracket in Onshape, it was very easy to do, um, and uh, I'll go through that process with you now to show you how it's done. Um, so you can see here um, the, the full full assembly. Um, I'm going to go over to the parts studio now that has the the, uh, the part in it. So there's, there's the bracket with all its holes and everything. And what I'll do is I'll just sort of back up to where we started. And so the first thing we started with was a drawing so you pick a plane and you draw the side view of the um, uh, of the sketch and you can edit all the drawings and all the all the measurements and are all in there and then once you're done with the drawing then what you do is you uh, you take it extrude that drawing so you basically from the center out you extrude it out to the full width of the the actual part that you want when it's done and now you'll notice that there's a face here and a face here and a face here and and a face there and when you ask the computer now to um, make a sheet metal part what it'll do is it'll put a face on every one of those it'll create a, a sheet metal piece a thin sheet metal piece for each one of these faces and so Hard to show that, but that's basically what happens there, and then all of a sudden it, it goes in. But what you do is you go in, and if you remember the face here and the one on the top, you select those and you ask it to eliminate them. And so as you eliminate the pieces, anything that's left over, it puts the proper radiuses in for the bends, and then you tell it what the thickness of the material is, and ultimately you end up with a half inch in the middle here, which for the rod end bearing and the two... Um, the two uh, AN 964 16 uh, 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 washers that makes the the half inch uh, piece. So um, now on top of that, you need to we got to add those those holes in the bottom. And as you can see, I what I did is I I, I made a new drawing uh, on this face and I put in the holes and then I asked it to extrude cut. So basically, instead of adding material, it subtracts the material wherever your holes are and then you have your hole locations. And so there you can see how easy and fast it is to build uh, a bracket in Onshape. And the beauty of this program um, is that it will allow you to then take that and make a flat, flat pattern drawing of it. And 
gives you the bend locations. It gives you, you know, basically it's a one-to-one -one drawing that you can go in and you can cut it out and and make a pattern for, for cutting in the shop. So now that we've got this pattern, I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to cut it out. So we're here in the shop and I'm going to carry on from what I've talked about uh, in the design phase of this hinge. And um, as you can see, um, I have one made here. Uh, we did this in two parts. Uh, one uh, is the hinge plate and we basically took a piece of, of rod, turned it on the lathe and um, threaded it. I drilled a hole through it and threaded it uh, for uh, uh, quarter 28. And then um, we just basically made a mounting plate um, that has two holes that could be um, that you can put screws into. Uh, the big thing with with that is we want to make sure that this doesn't rotate after you've got it enclosed in the uh, in the rudder. And um, it's very important that you have something that uh, will take the anti-torque on it by putting two screws through this plate. As you can see, we've got two screw holes. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on on how to make the mounting and the pivot bracket that gets mounted to the back of the fin. Um, this is uh, a neat little process. Uh, what we did was we took a sheet of paper and again from the design we made a flat design of the of the uh, uh, of this bracket that uh, we've shown you've seen earlier. And then what I did is I cut it out and I basically made a template out of it, out of it uh, uh, so that um, we can then use this piece of plywood for tracing. So after tracing. Uh, onto a sheet of, uh, of um, this is a 60, 60 thou material or so. Um, we, we then traced it and then uh, cut it out uh, with the uh, with the cutoff wheel and then shaped it on our on our uh, on our grinding uh, on our two inch 70 by 72 inch grinding uh, station and came up with with this and then from from this template again we center punched and we drilled the two main mounting holes. And the reason we didn't drill the other two is because we want to drill those through after they after it's already been bent. And so, uh, what I then did is I created this this uh, flanging block, and it's just a piece of half inch uh, material. And we took it over to the uh, to the mill and we set it on the mill, and then we we marked the first hole right in the center, and. Uh, and drilled it and tapped it and then we, we basically fastened this right on centered the second hole located it drilled it and tapped it and so now You can get and I'm just going to grab the screws You can you can take this this piece and you can now mount it onto this uh, onto this flanging block and get it to go here Once it's on the flanging block then we can take it to the arbor press and we can actually bend it in a very controlled way so that we've got uh, a good bend going both directions. So there we go. I drill the holes just so that they just fit and so we wanted to make sure that we've got good, a good tolerance in there. You don't want that bracket wiggling around uh, when it's mounted onto the fin. So there you can see. So we've got this mounted nice and nice and tight on here and then we turn it over and I've got a I'll show you the block in a second here but I'll, I'll move the cameras over and I'll show you how we actually bend it down into uh, and, and, and get get the, the shape that we're looking for So I've cleaned the part up on the uh, on the the belt sander, and now I'm going to take it and we're going to mount it onto the onto the bending block.
in so that it can't move. And then we're, what we're going to basically do is we're going to take it and put it in here. And this is a pair of heavy pipes that allows me to take the arbor press right in the very center and get it straight. And then we just basically bend it down through. And as you can see, it bends it nicely, uh, gets you all started. And um, then we take it over to the to our, our surface plate and we bend it the rest of the way. As you can see, we can take our hammer here and then we can start to bend it flat. There's a little bit of usually a little bit of a hump in the center there too, and I try to bend that out. So, and it doesn't, you know, it comes right off, um, and it gives you this half inch interior gap that you need for being able to, to do that. I mean, you might have to, it might have a little spring in it, you just have to just bring it down. So then, you, as you can see, you get a very nice hinge. And then from there, what we do is we mark. We use our template again and we put it on here and we mark our spot uh, where we want that, that, that hinge to, to, uh, to cut out. Everything's over at the other area where I need it. But, uh, so we just, we just mark our, our, our spot here. And with that, then we can go to the drill press. So here at the drill press, we are going to be uh, drilling the pilot hole and then the final hole for the, the hinge pivot point. Nice straight through holes, and then we just enlarge them to the proper hole size for the uh, for the bolt. Uh, we're using quarter twenty. Most hinges are, are three sixteenths, um, but uh, we have a, a bunch of rod end bearings that we're going to use that are quarter twenty. So we figured that would be best to use. Chuck, there we go. And so then again, nice and slow, don't need to go too fast on the drilling. Now, this time we do it, we do each side separately. up just ever so slightly. And we've got, we're pretty close to a finished part. Last thing we have to do is basically we have to just deburr the inside so that uh, we're not uh, uh, having any interference. And then we go on from there to uh, assembly.
we've now deburred it and uh, we can take this and, and do the final assembly where we take the rod end bearing um, to, uh, to uh, quarter, uh, quarter washers, 4 sixteens, um, and, uh, and the, proper, uh, uh, the proper nut on it with a nylock, nylock nut so you don't have anything coming apart. And the, the, the bolt should always be installed from the top. So this would be installed uh, you know, onto the fin like so. And then um, it would this this part here would be uh, installed in the rudder, and then this would allow you then to to uh, if you have three especially then you can micro adjust them by half turns, and get them as close as possible so you don't have any binding longitudinally, and um, and then you put a lock nut uh, or sorry a, a cinch nut on here so that when you get it in the right place then you then you uh, lock it up against uh, you know if you have it here then it would it would lock up against this part here to keep it from spinning and keep it from and keep it straight so anyway this is the the hinges the hinge system that we've come up for the with the aria um it's it's usable on almost any airplane i kind of got my inspiration from from uh uh air, building my vans rv10 this is the kind of hinge that they used in the in the rv10 with a rod end bearing and gives you a lot of flexibility and adjustment and allows you to um to put the thing uh, and, and it's nice and you know bearing surface. Uh, you're not uh, you're not doing two brackets and a bolt kind of thing. Where you're actually you're actually using a rod and bearing for the uh, for the surface, which is uh, by far the best way to approach that. Here's a video of the uh, or a few shots of the, uh, in, the you know the part installed on the rudder of the Aria. As you can see on the back side, we've got the plate mounted with the two screws, um, and it gives it a good solid um, backing, and then. Um, the uh, the part that that comes through in a half inch hole, the the extension comes through, and it gives you a surface that you can uh, you can mount, uh, push the, uh, the the locking nut against, and this provides us with a good hinge for the aria. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little how-to video on how to make a hinge for uh, a wooden aircraft specifically. Uh, we found that the hinges in other aircraft either get riveted into the structure, or um, or they're welded onto the structure, but with wood you need to have something that um, comes in from behind, um, that won't turn, that won't need to be, uh, you know, like if you're going to take something apart down the road, then you don't you don't want it to back off. You have to keep it in place. So we had to come up with this flanged type uh, backing nut um, that goes all the way through the structure that provides a surface to be able to put the locking you know, the, the cinch nut, the locking nut against and be able to torque it up to so that the whole bearing affair doesn't loosen and turning. Um, and it, uh, it's just something a little bit different with wooden aircraft that, that I found that uh, we had to kind of work around. So we designed this whole thing to, um, to, to, to fit the need. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks. This video is going to go through what I received from Fisher with my tailplane kit. And I'm going to go through the building of the uh, tailplane spar. Uh, this is not an instructional video, but you may get some hints and tips for how to do things when you build your own aircraft. Do follow their instructions. So, without wasting any more time, let's crack on with the video. It's arrived, so I'm excited. Here is the Fisher Tail Kit in all its glory. Lots of pieces of strip wood, all labelled up with uh, tags on. And I've been through checking the plans. As you can see, uh, this is just the assembly plan, but there are two large sheets uh, which show the things in full size. It came with uh, a set of resin, the uh, T88. Uh, I opted uh, to talk to Dave uh, Hertner and asked not to have the covering option which would normally come and uh, he offered me the Oratex because that's what I'm going to cover the aircraft with but I, I declined that because I don't know how long it's going to be before I'm going to be covering and I haven't fully decided on a colour scheme if I actually go on with the uh, Fisher Youngster but as of this moment in time I am impressed with what's Arrived, the quality of the wood. There are no instructions. Uh, this is 
uh, an aircraft you are building purely from plan, so experience, and uh, there was no itemised list of components. So I had to go through the plans and check off what was needed and where it was going to go and make sure I had those components included. So I don't know how well this uh, sort of shows up really on the video side, but uh, this is the sort of the assembly uh, drawing for the tailplane and uh, there, there's some instructions uh, giving, you know, giving you how things go, uh, itemised drawings for small constructional items uh, and the little bits of the assembly that go on. There's a couple of patterns involved on here and uh, there's some components which are needed for uh, later type assembly and of course you know, we've just got the tail kit uh, we've got no uh, no way that we're going to be setting up the range of controls. There's no uh, metal hardware that was included with this. Uh, at this stage it comes as part of the full aircraft so I haven't got any of the hinges, all the horns, all the material to make horns or anything like that. So uh, looking at uh, the wood material, uh, lots of spruce, lots of strip wood, uh, and it's all labelled and these labelled marks which are on here uh, refer to various parts on uh, the, the plans so from what I've got so far if it's got a W on it it's for the tail plane and if it's got an F on it it's to do with the, uh, the vertical fin and rudder and we've got good quality uh, plywood, uh, strips for doing uh, the gussets and closure panels and the, uh, the spars for the tail plane come slightly shorter, it reduces the shipping cost by a, a huge amount. They've been uh, cut uh, for a sort of scarf joint because you need to scarf them together to get them to full length. As I said earlier in the video, there's a requirement for scarf joints. Uh, this has been done by Fisher for keeping the price down for posting this particular kit and to practice the skills required for things like longerons on the, the fuselage. So uh, for us in the UK, it's a 1 in 10 to 1 in 12 taper and as this is 3 quarters of an inch thick, then really we'd be wanting to have at least a seven and a half inch uh, length of scarf and uh, this is six and a quarter so we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I do my scarf tapers so just a quick look at the uh, jig which I use uh, that's the taper bed which I can set at different angles as you can see here I can set that to different tapers uh, the piece of wood lies on here, it's clamped and clamped down to it. It's just basically a box, designed so it actually is at a tilt, so that's pretty much level. And then we've just got a guard here to run the router along, so the router bit basically just goes along this edge. I'll start this end and I'll work that way, uh, and I'll do it in uh, more than one cut if necessary, I don't want to take off too much material at once, so I'll just set a height to start off with and do a couple of passes. High protection, always required.
percent. There we have one scarf joint. Right then, so scarfing is uh, done. I've mixed up some resin. I can see why uh, people put it on with a stick. This is too thick, this resin, to be able to be applied with a brush. It's, uh, it's distinctly loopy, one might say. Anyway, I will uh, go into time lapse now while I do this. So this is where things, uh, I do things possibly slightly different to other people. I've got this edge here which is uh, holding everything straight. I've got, uh, and normally I would sandwich this a scarf joint between two straight edges. Um, in a slightly different format that, that both normally be um, a removed item but in this case I'm using one of the uh, doublers as the straight edge so I'm just going to clamp across make sure that uh, my lines align going straight across there I'm just making sure everything is Flat on the bench. Chair out of the way. So clamp, clamp. As you can see, uh, I've clamped this up, just making sure everything is level, same height, sure the joint is at the same height. Uh, I'm getting squeeze out all the way along, so I know I've got enough glue in the joint. I'm just going to wipe off the excess with some uh, denatured alcohol. Let's see what we've got. Uh, seems to be uh, a reasonable joint. A little bit of a no void there, it's just uh, the, the resin sunk slightly. As you can sort of see, I clamp either side of the scarf joint. I don't actually clamp on the scarf joint. Let's see what happens when we get these clamps off. If it were released. There we go. Oh, just a little bit of resin underneath. You can still see the sort of resin marks there. Where it sort of oozed out a bit. But uh, yeah, all in all, not a bad job. So, task to do, task done. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, 
please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.